In this question, we're asked to show by counterexample that the following statement is false. If two functions h and k are such that their derivatives h dash and k dash are equal, then the functions h and k must themselves be equal. In order to answer this question, what we're looking to find are two functions h and k that have equal derivatives, but are not in fact equal their self. The key to this question is understanding that functions in, of x will always differentiate to be the same, but the constants that disappear will mean that their overall functions can be different. So what I mean by this is if we take h of x is simply equal to 2x and then say g of x, sorry we should be doing k of x, k of x equals 2x plus 1, what I can see from this is that h dash of x is equal to 2 and k dash of x is also equal to 2. So we have h dash of x equal to k dash of x. However, hx does not equal kx. And therefore, the statement is disproved by counterexample. And the key to this question really is that you can pick any functions of x as long as the function, the bit really the, that contains the x part of it is the same and differentiates to give the same, but you just adjust a constant in there, then this will work. Okay, so let's look at now at part b of our question. Part B says the functions f and g have domains 7 to 60 and 9 to infinity respectively and defined by f of x equals 2 log of 4x plus 5 plus 3 and g of x is equal to e to x. Part I asks to find an expression for f to the minus 1 of x. So we're looking for an inverse function of f of x. So to approach this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say y is equal to 2 log of 4x plus 5 plus 3. I'm going to now rearrange to make x a subject. So to do this I start by subtracting 3 from both sides. So I get y minus 3 equals 2 log 4x plus 5. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plan ahead here as well. I'm just going to bring by laws of logs this 2 up as a power and this is going to help me move things a little bit quicker. Uh, or actually what I'll do is I, yeah, I'll do it like that 4x plus 5 and so at this point what I'm going to do is I'm now going to take e for both sides so I've put the squared up there so I'm going to have e to the power of y minus 3 is equal to 4x plus 5 squared I can take the square root of both sides so taking the square root of e to y minus 3. Remember this is multiplying by half, so just to make sure that we understand what we're doing there, this is equal to 4x plus 5. I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. So I'm going to deal with this bracket now, I'm just going to do y minus 3 times half, which will give me e to y minus 3 over 2. It's worth noting at this stage here, I could have actually brought the 2 across as well and divided by it, I just did that to reduce one of the steps, it all leads to the same answer. So I get e to the power of y minus 3 over 2 is equal to 4x, uh, uh, sorry we forgot I've got to subtract 5 from both sides there, so minus 5 is equal to 4x and then finally I'm going to divide by 4, so I get that x is equal to 1 quarter e to the y minus 3 over 2 minus 5. Okay, let's look at part 2. Part 2 says write down a domain of f to minus 1 of x, giving the endpoints of your domain correct to the nearest integer. Well, the domain of, domain of f to minus 1 of x, this is equal to the range of f of x. So really this is a problem about finding the range of f of x. 
In order to find the range of fx, we need to consider the graph of f of x. I'm not going to sketch it exactly. What is going to come out is roughly something like this. Now, the reason I've got this sketch, although I haven't done it particularly accurately, I've got no rep points on that diagram or anything, so it seems a little bit unhelpful, is it tells me the most important thing that I know, and that is that this is a one-to-one -one function, and it is strictly increasing. So these facts tell me that actually the endpoints of my domain will give me the endpoints of my range. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, well, f of 7 equals 2 log 4 times 7 plus 5 plus 3. So when I work through that and we work out 2 log 4 times 7 plus 5 plus 3, you should get uh, an answer of 9.9930, but it says to give the answer to the nearest integer, so I'm just going to say f of 7 equals 10 to 0 decimal places. And then if I do f of 60, so I get 2 log of 4 times 60 plus 5 plus 3. Now, if I evaluate that instead, what we get as an answer on your calculator is 14.0025. So again, if I give that to the nearest integer value, I get f of 60 equals 14 to zero decimal places. So the range of f of x uh, and the domain of f to minus one of x can be given. These are strict. Uh, these are weak inequalities, so it can be equal to those values. So it's equal to the range 10 to 14. Okay, so let's now look at part three of this question. Part three says to write down an expression for g f of x and simplify your answer. So what we're going to do here is I am going to substitute f of x, so f of x into g of x. Remember, the way to remember how to substitute these is you read it from right to left, not left to right. So g f of x is given by e to the power of our function of f of x. So 2 log 4x plus 5 plus 3. So it says simplify your answer. So I'm going to do a couple of things to simplify this. I'm going to use laws of indices for e to split this into e to the power of 2 log 4x plus 5 times e to the power of 3. I'm also going to use laws of logs to bring this 2 up as a power. So there's quite a lot I'm doing in that step. So I get e to the power of log 4x plus 5 squared times e to the power of 3. Now the reason I've done that is because actually what that allows me to do is that I now have e and log x acting directly on each other. They are inverse functions, so they cancel each other out. So what I get is 4x plus 5. Oops, I don't know why I've written the e there. Let's go back. So I get 4x plus 5 squared times e cubed. And that is as simple as we can write the function. Okay then, so let's go back and let's look and see how the marks are avoided in this question. Okay, so essentially the way we're given marks in this question is that we take any function of h of x and then we pick any function for k of x which is exactly the same as h of x but we've added something to the constant. So here the constant was 0 and I've added a constant of 1 there. So that is my method mark. The answer mark is then a convincing argument verifying that the derivatives are the same uh, but the functions were not the same to start off with. Okay, so let's look at part B then. Part B, we get a standalone mark if you have got to the point y minus 3 is equal to log of x, uh, log of 4x plus 5. So here we go, we have a standalone mark at this stage. Uh, there is a 
method mark for attempting to get an exponential equation. And then finally, there is a standalone answer mark if you get to this end expression. Part two, there is just a standalone mark for getting the lower bound as 10. And as a st standalone mark for getting the upper bound, the range is uh, for this domain of f to minus 1 is 14. Okay, and then finally, part three. Part three, there is a standalone mark for correctly substituting in the val uh, function of f of x into g of x. There is then a correct mark for getting that you get 4x plus 5 squared. That's a standalone mark. And a correct final mark if the whole expression is correct. Okay then. Well, I hope my solution made sense and that you was able to follow how to mark it.